Hi everyone, it's Michael from Xano, and I'm excited to announce a new feature that we just released, which is the stream return type for Query All Records. So as you may or may not know, Query All Records is super flexible. You can have different return types, one being a list, which is a default, right? Or a list of records. You could do a single record, an existence of a record, or a record count, or aggregates, where you have full control over groupings, and aggregators to do different things like sums, averages, etc. So we've added to that this new return type called stream. So what exactly does that mean? How do we use it? So we'll get into all that. So stream is specifically used with for each loops because we use for each loops anytime that we need to manipulate or transform a list of data. So many times when we need to do that to a list of records, we first query them then run it through a for each loop and apply that manipulation or transformation to each item of the list. Now, what happens when your data be starts to become very large? Well, just getting a bunch of records is not very easy on the memory and performance. And sometimes we'll see with lists too large, timeouts will be caused because there is too much memory being pushed through the for each loop. Okay, no problem. You can just introduce a recursive workflow to get through that, but those can be a little complicated and cumbersome. So we created this new return type called stream, which basically gets all that data in a memory friendly way that works specifically with for each loops so that it still mimics the recursive workflow without all that cumbersome work. So let's go ahead and now jump to my workspace here right in front of me. And we'll kind of step through what the recursive look, workflow um, would look like versus what this new stream feature uh, will enable you to do with the data. So I'm just starting in a database table here. You'll notice I have some 45,000 records of movies, obviously a very large data set to just try and query all those records and push it through a forage loop, most likely going to run into memory issues. Uh, and timeouts, right? So we probably have to introduce some kind of recursive workflow uh, in order to manipulate that. So let's say all I want to do is change the title of every single movie to uppercase. So let's first jump to the recursive workflow, which is how you would traditionally have to do that. So I'm just going to jump to this endpoint I've set up. And right away, you'll notice that this function stack is pretty large. And this is a pretty basic um, recursive workflow basically. So you can see we first create a variable for the number. This is gonna be our page number. We have to use this while loop. So we're saying why true equals true. It's important to have a break loop whenever using while loops. We create this variable, which is gonna become our external paging uh, object here, where we have page set to that number variable. Then we query all the records, right? We have paging turned on, we need our metadata so we can get that next page. You can see we have external linked up. Then we have this conditional where if that next page equals null, then we for each loop, edit the record. We're going to upper for those last few items else. We're just gonna do that for every page, uh, edit the record, transform it to all uppercase, and then at the end, add a number to this number variable so the page changes with each iteration. So obviously, you can see once your logic starts to become very complex, this function stack can get pretty tricky, right? We have three different loops, a conditional, uh, and one of those loops is a while loop, so obviously a lot in here. This stream feature makes this a whole lot easier. So let me go ahead and go back and go to this endpoint here. So right now I just have query all records from movies. So instead of going in here and turning on paging and all that, what I can do is hit this button here and change my return type to stream and just hit save. And you'll see this message. So the stream return type should be referenced as list variable of a for each loop. So that's really the only time you'll wanna use stream because you'll notice if I just go ahead and return this right now, we'll just see this stream variable. So we won't actually see any records because this is designed in a memory friendly way to be pushed specifically through for each loops as that message says. So what we can do, we can go to data manipulation, get our for each loop. Our list will be movies with that return type as stream. And then here in our function stack, 
all I would need to do is edit record from movies. We would have just item.id here as the field value. And then our title here, we could get item.title and then apply that transformation in a filter just to upper. So it converts all characters and hit save. So right away, you can see just how much space I've saved in my function stack and just how much easier that is to think through logically. So we're getting all our records, we're looping through them in a memory efficient way, remember, and then we're doing our transformation. Okay, no crazy while loops and conditionals. So this stream return type is very awesome. So I can go ahead and run this and it might still take a second. So stream return types will typically be used when working with a lot of data, which oftentimes will be in background tasks versus API endpoints. So just bear that in mind. And once that finishes running, you can see my result has that stream variable because that's all you're returning. However, if we go jump to our database now, you can see all of my titles have been transformed to all uppercase. So we were able to do that in such a much simpler way than that recursive workflow. Remember, we're using that brand new feature, which is that stream return type, which enables us to get all our records. It still mimics that sort of paging recursive workflow, but it does it in a memory efficient way and also a way where we don't have to scratch our heads when building that in our function stack. So hopefully you guys thought this was interesting. And if you're working with large data sets, I know this will be a huge time saver and just really help you think through your logic in a much easier way. So hopefully uh, you guys find this helpful and see you guys in the next video.